Good morning. Welcome to Mondays in the Psalter. I'm Pastor Vandercook. Uh, I do apologize that I haven't been putting these videos out recently. I was on vacation for a couple of weeks at Pastor's Conference last week, so I've, I've been unavailable to uh, put them together for you. Uh, but today we, we look at Psalm 8, the psalm that is appointed for the 21st Sunday after Trinity. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and infants, you have established strength because of your foes, to still the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you care for him? Yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings, and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the heavens, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So, when we read this psalm, we can't help but think about creation, because obviously it talks about that quite a bit. Uh, we see the heavens, the work of God's hands. We see all the animals that live on the earth. We see the majesty, the, the, the glorious things that God has created. Uh, and of course, yesterday, Sunday, the, the Old Testament reading that's appointed for the 21st Sunday after Trinity is, in fact, the creation account, uh, the creation account which shows us uh, what God does not through any type of truly miraculous means. I mean, it is miraculous the way that God creates everything, but at the same time, the way that the world expects things to be done, they expect a lot of flair, a lot of flash to go with it if you're doing something like creating the world. But the way that God does it is, is simple. It's ordinary. He does it simply by the power of his word. God says, let there be light, and there's light. God says, uh, let there be an expanse in the heavens, a, a firmament to separate the waters above from the waters below. And lo and behold, there you go. You got sky and you got sea. Uh, he says, let there be uh, sun, moon, and stars. And there they are. Uh, he says, let there be animals. And then there's animals. This is the way God creates, simply by the power of his word. As it says in verse 2, out of the mouth of babes and infants, you have established strength because of your Closed. God's power comes and shows itself not through uh, signs and miracles per se. Now, certainly those are amazing things, but it's by the power of God's word. And it's there that we run into, uh, you know, we run up against the gospel reading for yesterday, uh, you know, from, uh, from John chapter 4, where you have this nobleman who comes to Jesus and he says, um, Come down and heal my son. Now, he's from Capernaum. He's meeting Jesus in Cana, 25 miles away. He knows that Jesus is the one that can grant this healing to his son. But the way he wants Jesus to do it is he wants him to come down to his son, you know, lay his hands on him or something like that, be present there, and raise his son from the dead. And Jesus responds and says, unless you see signs and miracles, you will never believe. This is Jesus' frustration with not only this nobleman, but with all the people, that their faith is founded upon not the word of God, but rather on the miracles that God does. The same thing comes up, uh, this made me think of Naaman uh, in the Old Testament, where Naaman, the Syrian military official, goes down to Elisha, and what does he want Elisha do to do, uh, to do for him? Well, he wants Elisha to heal him of his leprosy, but he expects Elisha to come out of his house, come meet him, wave his hand over him, uh, and somehow touch him and heal him in that way. He wants a miraculous sign. But what does he get from Naaman? Well, he does get a miracle, but it's not the way he wants it. Naaman, or I'm sorry, Elisha tells him, hey, this is what you got to do. Go to the Jordan, dip yourself in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh will be whiter than snow. I mean, think about, and of course we use that when we talk about holy baptism. Think about baptism. What are the amazing gifts that God is giving us there? Well, he's giving us forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. As how does he do it? He does it simply by the power of water and the word. 
And the thing that does the good thing is the word. And so what does Jesus do for the nobleman in yesterday's gospel reading? He tells him, unless you uh, see signs and wonders, you will never believe. And then he tells the nobleman, go, your son lives. And the nobleman believes. The nobleman has faith. God creates faith in that nobleman through the power of his word. Uh, notice, you know, Jesus says, your son lives, but he, you know, the nobleman's nowhere near his son. Does he know that Jesus is telling the truth? Well, he has faith that Jesus is. And in fact, he has faith very much like Abraham's in the Old Testament. Remember, Abraham, uh, you know, is asked to sacrifice Isaac, and he does it because he has faith that even if Isaac dies that day, that Isaac will live. He'll either live in the resurrection or God will raise him from the dead some other way. He doesn't know how it's going to happen, but Abraham has faith. The same is true of this nobleman. He has faith. God's word is powerful. That's what we see in this psalm as well. Uh, you know, the psalmist here, David, King David, writes this psalm, and he says, When I look at the heavens, the work of your fingers, when I see what your word has done, and then I say, wait, what is man that you are mindful of? And look at all the amazing things that God has done. And yet God puts all of those things under the dominion of man, under the lordship of man. You get to the sixth day of creation. And what does God create on the sixth day? He creates all of the animals, but he also creates man. And he puts all of creation under man's authority. He gives man dominion over that creation. God created it all for man. It's after the creation of man that God said and looks at it and says all the creation. He says it is very good. And so while we are in one sense, we are sinners, we are lowly, we are uh, sinful and unclean, we're poor miserable sinners, however you want to say it, but yet God crowns us with glory and honor. And how does he do that? How does he do that with us poor, miserable sinners? Of course, he sends his son, Jesus Christ, his word made flesh, to declare to us that our sins are forgiven, our, our sins are covered, and now he crowns us with glory and honor. He's made us a little lower than the heavenly beings. You would by no means argue that we are uh, higher than the heavenly beings, the angels and so forth, but he crowns us with glory and honor by the power of his word, the word made flesh, Jesus Christ. So dear friends in Christ, uh, sing praise to God this week, singing this psalm uh, and repeating that antiphon, the antiphon assigned for this psalm. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. For it's by the power of God's word that all the heavens were made. It's out of the, uh, the mouths of babes and infants that God establishes strength just through the power of his word. And it's by the power of his word that our sins are forgiven and that our sins are uh, that we are presented to our Father in heaven as holy and blameless by Jesus Christ. We'll see you next week on Mondays in the Psalter.